Hey everyone, welcome to the Imagine Shape Workbench. Um, sorry we're going kind of quick here. You can see it looks like any other workbench right now. So we're going to show you some parts that you can uh, import. You can insert a torus, a pyramid, a box or a cube, a cylinder, and a sphere. For us, we're going to start off with the cube to show some of the commands that this workbench allows. So when you insert your shape, you're going to get this toolbar. You can see there are many commands on it. These last few to the right, the last five actually, are all selection filters. So this one, you can select anything. The next one, planes, lines, points. And then the final one on the right is to select all. Again, sorry, we're going kind of fast, but we do have a time limit. So I've selected the plane selection filter, which allows me to only select planes on my part. You can see when you select a plane, three axes appear which you can move your plane about. All you have to do is click and drag. So make sure you hold down your mouse button while you're doing this. To get to another face, just select it and again same process, click, hold, and drag. This really doesn't allow for too much creativity so we're gonna switch to the lines, line selection filter that is. So you can see now we can select lines which gives us some more possibilities to get creative. You can see that shape is getting pretty crazy now, but again, we're gonna amp up the level a bit more by using the point selection filter. The process is the same. You select a point, select an axis, click and drag. So this shape at this point is starting to get pretty funky. I always recommend moving it around, taking a good look at it so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, these two buttons here can be kind of confusing at times, but the one on the right is very helpful. Basically, it will align your axis so that it's oriented with the view that you're working with. Very helpful for more complicated parts. You'll see that later on in the demo that we show you when we'll be making a cartoon character. So next on the list is the rotation command. Right now you can see I have a point selected. Now when I try to rotate a point, nothing will happen. You can see that here. Nothing happens to the shape. Let's say I go back to my selection filters and select a line at first. I select the line, rotate it, and you can see the part changes drastically. It's a pretty nifty tool to get used to. So now let's select all. This is important. Now you can rotate your entire part. This is very useful when you're orienting your part so that it's in the proper orientation, I guess, to add to an assembly. The same works for translation. So no big surprises here. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, the best way to work with or the best way to learn this workbench is just by playing around with it, really. So we're going to orient our view so we can see the front. Uh, as I said, definitely move your part around a lot so you can see what is happening. So now what I've done is I've held the control button to select two points at once. And you can see that when I translate these two points at once, it's the same as if I were to select the top line on the front face. So now I'm going to select a couple faces and we're going to switch to the affinity command. This is similar to translation except it moves the two points, faces, or lines that you select in opposite directions may seem kind of maybe useless at first, but it's very helpful, especially when working with symmetric parts. You can see, very simple, just select two different faces. It doesn't even have to be faces. You can select two different lines, two different points, or two different planes. So again, very simple to use. The best way to get used to it is just by playing around with it. Here I've selected two lines, select my axes, click and drag. So we'll do it again with a couple of points now. 
you can select any two points. I just happen to select two opposite points. And now you can move your shape around and get it to the geometry that you're looking for. I always recommend uh, exiting the tool, the commands tool toolbar, so that you can move your part around and see it without having too many distractions in the way. So, just again the affinity command. Uh, when you s select all points, it's very useful. The affinity command is very useful because you can scale the entire part. Now to scale it in all three axes, all you have to do is press control and then move your mouse anywhere on the screen. So now just moving my part around, you can see it's a pretty funky shape, so I'm pretty happy with it right now, but the edges are a bit pronounced. So what we're going to do for that is use the attraction command. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to select a few different faces. So I select my plane selection filter and I'm going to select my left face, the top face if I can get to it. There we go. Oh, alright so well, anyway, it doesn't matter what faces you select, but basically the point is with this command you can round out edges or you can make the edges very pronounced. Okay, so now we're going to take you through a quick part that we made in the Imagine Shape Workbench. Now this part, or character I should say, you may recognize as Goku from Dragon Ball Z. As you can see, the head and the face of Goku is already made. At this point, we're just applying the hair. In order to do this, we are inserting many pyramids and then shaping them using the translation, rotation, affinity, and attraction commands. Another measure that we took to simplify the process of adding on the hair was copying and pasting of the hair strands that were already made. Once we pasted the new one, we only had to make minor alterations to make it look good. After a few hours of work, we were able to get the result that we wanted, but we'll get to that in a little bit. First, we're going to take you through the assembly. Now we're in the assembly workbench. I just have to go find my parts and insert them into the product. So there's the body that was previously made. And the head and face, which I just showed you the process of adding the hair. As you can see, the head is fairly small for the body. So we're going to change that by simply going into the part design for the head and scaling it up. Now that it's complete, you can have some stunning views of Goku boating. You can see what it would look like if Goku decided to go car shopping. Not only that, but we can see Goku sunbathing. Wait, that's not all. Now Goku, after sunbathing, gets hot and wants to go for a dip in the canals of Venice. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.